Let's complete our discussion of vector multiplication by looking at the dot product and the cross product. So earlier we looked at what happens when you do a scalar to vector multiplication, where you just scale the length of the vector by whatever that scalar is, thus the name scalar. And now we're going to look at what happens when you multiply two vectors. Now, unlike when we do scalar multiplication, which we learned in grade school, now when you're multiplying two vec by two vectors, there are actually two kinds of multiplications that, that we do. The first is the dot product, which is basically uh, intuitively what it means is you have a vector a, you have a vector b, and what you do is you take one vector and you project it onto another. So it, the one way to view it is if you if you had a you know a sun shining straight down on it, what's the length of the shadow? And you can also uh, you can it's not sensitive to the order. So if you had to do if you you can also project this vector a to vector b, put the sun over here, shine that way get that projection, you end up with the same number, right? Uh, and you can also see this mathematically. So let's, let's start with the mathematical definition. Let's start with the mathematical definition. So the definition of a dot b is going to be the length of a times the length of b times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between them. And here you can see why projecting from one to the other doesn't necessarily matter, right? Because cosine of minus theta is the same as cosine of theta. So it doesn't really matter if you're, if you're defining positive as in the counterclockwise direction, if you're doing positive theta or negative theta. Um, each of these terms, they don't really matter, right? A times B is the same as B times A if you're taking just the lengths. And theta, positive theta, negative theta are the same. So one of the key characteristics is it the order doesn't really matter. And another, another key feature is that, so order doesn't matter. And then another key thing to, is to point out is these are all scalars. So the output of a dot product is a scalar. So the output is a scalar. So in addition to uh, doing it doing it this way, uh, where you calculate the length and multiplying it by cosine theta, you can also do it. You can also process this straight by looking at the, the expressions of a, B, and C. So in the case of Cartesian coordinates, if we define vector A as AX hat plus BY hat plus ZZ hat, and vector B is equal to, say, DX hat plus EY hat plus FZ hat, the dot product is the dot product of these individual components. So if you were to take the dot product, the other thing is cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So if you have these two, it maximizes when they're pointing in the same direction. So ax dot, so if you had ax hat dot dx hat, you're just going to get a times d. But if you had ax hat dot with any of these, you get zero because the angle between them is 90 degrees, right? So if we were to treat these as polynomials, we can also just multiply them expand and multiply them like polynomials, but we also have the benefit that the cross terms will all equal to zero. So if I distribute this a in, a times d, a times e, a times f, note that the a times e and a times f will be zero. So all I'm going to be left with is a times d. And then also the x hat dot x hat will be length of x, length of x, both are one, and cosine theta, theta is zero. So x hat dot x hat is going to be equal to one. So you're just left with a times d. And for the same reasoning, you'll also, when you multiply this out, it's going to be 0 everywhere except for the y component dot y component, in which case you get be. And the y hat dot y hat just equals to 1. right? And then same for the z, you end up with cf. So uh, you can see that the, the way to do this algebraically in it, outside of this definition that you see here is to just multiply the individual components together and then in turn sum all of those results together and that final scalar number is going to be your dot product. 
So now let's move on to the cross product. I'm going to start with the intuitive definition first. So let's say again we have a, a unit vector a and a, a, or a regular vector a, not a unit vector, and you have a vector b, and you want to take the cross product. So the cross product is going to be, first of all, you, you need a, it's going to be a value that's going to be perpendicular to both of these vectors. So it's going to be a vector that comes out of the paper, as you see here. Um, it, so when you say, I say perpendicular, it can, in this case, if they're both on this paper, it can either come out of the paper or into the paper. The way you figure that out is by doing the right-hand rule. So what you would do is you would point, point all of your fingers out, other than your thumb in the direction of the first vector, and then curl your fingers towards the second vector. So if you were to do that, you'll see that your thumb would be pointing in the direction of out of the paper. In that case, that is the direction of A cross B. So if this is, so this is the direction of A cross B, and then the remaining fact is how to find the magnitude. So the magnitude of A cross B is going to be the area of this parallelogram that you see here. And so if we write that out mathematically, the magnitude of A cross B is going to be the length of A times the length of B sine theta. Right? If this was theta here, sine theta would be this length, would be the height of the parallelogram. So it would be the length of A times the height. right? Uh, and so you can calculate this height by length of B times sine theta. So this is the height of the parallelogram and this is one side, right? So again, you see you want to find, you need to find two things. First is what direction it is. And to find the direction, you use the right-hand rule. Let's just see. So first of all, the direction is accordance to the right-hand rule. So you do that again by keeping, pointing your index finger and all of your other fingers in one vector, curl it towards the other, the the other vector and then whatever direction your thumb is pointing to make that happen uh, that is that tells you what direction the curl is um, the and the second thing is the magnitude of it and the where the magnitude or the length of it is going to be again the area of the parallelogram so length of a length of b sine theta now you see this is an or dependent on the order Right? If I do A cross B, the length is going to be AB sine theta. If I do B cross A, it's the same parallelogram, so the length is going to be A cross B, A times B sine theta. However, the direction is now, if I have my fingers pointed this way and curl it towards A, now my thumb is going into the board. So if you, if you note that A cross B does not equal B cross A, but they are related. So A cross B is equal to minus b cross a. Right? It's the same length, but it's in the opposite direction. So that's, that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. And the second thing is the output. Before here is the output as a scalar, but over here I, I'm telling you how to find the direction and the length. So what's the output of the cross product? It's a vector. It's the output. So think of it this way. Uh, this is a different kind of multiplication. It's the corollary. Like if this one was multiplied by a cosine theta, this one would be multiplied by a sine theta. Uh, this one, uh, while we're doing the comparison, it maxes out at theta equals 0. In this case, uh, you can see this one, this cross product, maxes out at theta equals 90 degrees. So the worst case for this, where the, the, they are completely perpendicular from them, is going to be to each other, is going to be the, the maximum case for this. Because if they're perpendicular to each other, then it's, you get the, the largest area possible and the height, right? The height is what changes when you change this angle. So when it's 90 degrees, the height is maximized. It's just the length of B. You get the largest length possible in your cross product. Uh, and separately, the direction, Think of it more like 
we're using a, a convention of whether it comes out or into the table. We're using that as a way to indicate whether this, whether to go from one vector to the other is a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. So that's, that's another way to look at it. Now, the last thing that I want to add is in the case of uh, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates, there is a formula for calculating the cross product that works out pretty well. And that's, you can calculate if, uh, if my vector A and vector B are as you defined over here. You can also write out the, the cross product as the determinant of this matrix here. And so for those, for, uh, for those of us whose linear algebra is a little bit rusty, uh, remember the, to evaluate this. You can, you can just do uh, a really gory way, or uh, there's also this approach where you say, I'm going to look at x, so I'm going to block out everything in this row and this column, and left with the determinant of this 2 by 2. So that's the determinant of b, c, e, f times x hat. And then plus y, so if I can, I can uh, look at this here, leaving me with a, c, d, f. Also remember, I have a plus minus plus relationship. So this would be minus uh, determ the determinant of B of uh, A, C. Let me just clean this up. So minus the determinant of A, C, D, F of Y hat, and then plus, and then if you cover this z part up, you're left with a, b, d, e. So plus the determinant of a, b, d, e of z hat. So this is a way of writing out how you would calculate if you just had a and b in this expression using a linear algebra formula. Uh, note that it works in Cartesian really well. Uh, and the main reason that you might like to have this expression is also it, you can very clearly see where there might be simplifications. So if, if some of the terms are 0, uh, it's, it's a lot easier if you write it out this way. So make sure you know how to find it graphic, how to find these two multiplication products graphically. In the case of the dot product, it's the two lengths multiplied together times cosine theta, or visually, it's the projection. The output is a scalar. In the case of the cross product, uh, it's the area of the parallelogram formed by these two vectors. And uh, numerical wise, it, it, number wise, it works out to be length of A times length of B sine theta. And also, this output is a vector, so you also have a direction. And the direction is either is perpendicular to these two vectors and to determine which direction. That narrows it down to two choices, right? In this case, out of the paper, into the paper. And you use the right hand rule to figure that out. And then separately, in the case of the cross product, uh, for Cartesian coordinates, you see there's also this nice little uh, formula that you can use to hash out the actual uh, mathematical expression for the cross product. Now, one other trick that I think is worth mentioning is when you're doing the cross product of individual unit vectors, uh, one, one little trick that I that I found helpful is I try to just remember them this way. So in the case of x, y, z, I'll write this order, x hat, y hat, z hat, x hat. So I'll just write x, y, z, and I'll wrap around and add x in the end. And then if I were to do a cross product for any of these vectors, the trick is if, I, if I'm going in this direction, then it's, then it's a positive sign. So x cross y is going to be equal to z. Uh, y cross z is going to be equal to x, and z cross x is going to be equal to y. Or I can just extend this and write y here. So z cross x is going to be equal to y. If I'm going in this direction, then I have to add a negative sign. And that's just how it's going to turn out when you apply the right-hand rule. So y cross, so, uh, y cross x is going to be negative z. x cross z is going to be negative y and z cross y is going to be negative x. And the nice thing is that when we're going to talk about uh, two other coordinate systems that we'll use in this class. And that actually works in 
that actually works in those other coordinate systems too, if you remember the correct order. So in cylindrical coordinate systems, which we'll talk about in a little bit, if this is uh, rho, phi, z, and I'll just wrap around and write rho and phi as well. If I'm going this way, I'm, I just uh, I don't have to add a negative sign. So rho cross phi is z, phi cross z is rho, z cross rho is going to be equal to phi, and if I go in this direction, I'll have to add a negative sign. So uh, phi cross rho is going to be minus z, rho cross z is going to be minus phi, and z cross phi is going to be minus rho. And finally, uh, spherical coordinates, which is the other coordinate system that we'll talk about. And note that we're using the order where theta is the angle from the z-axis, which uh, will be another disappointment that another way that electrical engineers disappoint physicists, uh, you, you'll see that the same, the same trick applies here. So you have rho, theta, phi. If you're going in this direction, it's positive. If you're going back in the other direction, uh, you just have to add negative. So you know when you take a cross product between two basis vectors, you know what the answer is going to be. Uh, it's going to be that third vector if you're working in three dimensions. So the question is, is it a is it a positive sign or a negative sign? And you can just use this little trick here to know uh, which is which.